Okay, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm not Greg Bourne, because um, Greg couldn't make it, so um, you won't hear about sustainable surfing, unfortunately. Um, but um, to go on to my presentation, so developing a sustainable university, I'm talking with two hats. One is as head of sustainable development education at the university and head of the Centre for Sustainable Futures. And secondly, as chair of the university sustainability executive, which oversees the university's overall performance around sustainability. So I'm going to talk about uh, sustainability at the university first and then and CSS place in that. And uh, with all the great research going on here, I think really my concern is, is about uh, how we research ourselves in a way uh, as a university, how far we can claim to be a sustainable university. Um, if my presentation relates to the horizon bit, it's about the inclusive and innovative and reflective societies, challenge six which really, I think, lays a challenge to uh, higher education as a whole in terms of the, the uh, graduates we produce. Um, nice picture of the Davinsky there. Um, um, and what kinds of learning and research environments are conducive to producing committed, active and thinking global citizens, it says there, this uh, paper from the, uh, the uh, European Commission. I think part of this is uh, ensuring that the university in all aspects reflects sustainability principles right across the board. So uh, I think my take home message today is that as a university we're doing pretty well, but there's still a good deal more we could do and should do. Um, Ray Playford mentioned the sustainability strategy. Um, that was reworked from scratch um, last year uh, through a consultative exercise. It should be uh, launched with other strategies uh, imminently. So we can expect a, a new impetus to our work across the university to be uh, led by that. And you'll see that uh, that quote from the strategy talks about um, um, work across all of our activities. So um, with that on board, I think it's important to recognize that sustainability principles can guide and enhance and enrich virtually all, re all areas of higher education and lends a coherence and uh, a potential for synergies which are often uh, otherwise missed in the sort of silo structures that all universities tend to have. However, as I said, we're doing, we're doing quite well. Uh, so what's our track record? Um, these are some of the steps and uh, uh, highlights we've uh, taken or achieved over the past few years. Really, the story goes back to at least 2005, if not before. So we've been at this for some time. Those of you who visited ISSR and CSF might recognize those steps <laughs> in Kirby Lodge. It means that every morning, CSF staff and ISSR start the morning by going around in circles up the spiral staircase. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so we've got some things to shout about. Um, uh, as, as some of those things uh, show, and there's another slide similarly, um, which tells the story a little, a little bit more uh, detail. Um, the fact that sustainability is now one of um, four uh, key ambitions in our corporate uh, strategy is, is important, of course. Um, and uh, we've, uh, as Ray Playford said, we, we overall the sector leader in the people and planet green league which is uh, uh you know again uh, very good to to know that um externally you know we have quite a reputation in this area um, and sometimes i think we're more better known for our work externally than internally and that's something we need to do something about um we we manage the agenda through uh, what we call the tricameral approach, bringing together teaching and learning, uh, operations and research, and now uh, working on uh, the sustainable strategy, sustainability strategy. We realise now we've also got to develop a teach, uh, sorry, uh, an action plan. So there's there's moves afoot now to to begin to develop a, an integrated action plan, not just for those keeners, but really for the whole university, which we hope will be mandated uh, by uh, the Vice-Chancellor's Office. In fact, you know, they're expecting that. Uh, okay, a few words about uh, the Centre for Sustainable Futures, which, which I lead um, on the teaching side of it. So that's our overall purpose, uh, and we work in three areas, so it's uh, supporting curriculum change and supporting academics and students uh, on the teaching and learning. 
uh, research related to uh, sustainability education and then the sort of whole university work, um, working with ISSR and, and operations. So that keeps us busy. We have a small team, but uh, I think quite effective. Uh, these are the nine areas, project areas we, we work in. Uh, and basically we have a facilitative and a catalytic role working uh, throughout the university. Um, these are some of the key outputs, all of which have had a, a good national and international uh, reception. Um, the, the book of the Sustainable University looks at the case studies of 10 UK universities who have been on this journey towards greater sustainability through their operations and, and work. Uh, and that's just been reissued in a paperback, which makes it affordable, which I'm really relieved about. Um, uh, we are involved in research in, in a, uh, mostly small projects, but um, uh, effective in terms of uh, supporting change. Um, if you take the, the middle ones, um, we've worked with uh, carbon visuals um, uh, on carbon visualization for some time, and that work's going, going further, and it's, it's quite exciting, and I've got, I've got one slide to show you on that. And linked to that is uh, some work on energy literacy, which has been led by Debbie Cotton in education development, who's, who's part of our wider team. Not our team, I should say that CSF, just to be slightly boring, CSF, uh, Education Development and Pedrio are structurally all part of the same thing as far as the university is concerned. Um, so Debbie heads up Education Development uh, as part of that team. So Debbie's research with a, with a few others, uh, as, as shown there, has been looking at the energy literacy of our students. And we've had quite good replies, a uh, thousand responses from across all faculties and schools. Uh, and that's now leading to a bigger project working with some other universities. So that's, that's looking quite uh, good and we're getting some papers out uh, based on uh, energy literacy of our students. And uh, there's no time to talk about the results but except that uh, their formal curriculum is actually quite important in the, w the way they think about energy. So, uh, you know, that's, 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 that's interesting to know. Um, the graphic in the bottom right hand corner comes from Carbon Visuals, it's, uh, which is a, a company we've been working with and this is actually based on the carbon footprint of buildings at Plymouth and there's a whole set of these slides uh, and also Paul Lumley, the, the energy manager, has commissioned a new video uh, looking, at, um, uh, looking at the carbon footprint uh, of Babbage and we need, to, we need to now work on how, work on how to best to use this technology to raise both staff and student awareness. But it's all quite exciting. And uh, if you're interested in this, uh, Car um, Anthony Turner from Carbon Visuals is here, to is here today. I uh, can tell you a lot more. Uh, so, um, uh, finishing. Um, that's just a, a, you know, a screenshot from uh, People and Planet to show it, you know, we're second place there by half a point, which we've been for, for two years now, which is quite frustrating. But uh, we, we, are, we are doing well. Other universities are catching up, some are overtaking some aspects. Um, so we are looking at uh, the whole university response. Uh, this is the life framework, uh, which Ray Playford mentioned. And uh, which looks, it really shows there's an integrative framework here where we can work to and our new uh, action plan will be looking at trying to advance on all fronts uh, in the future. Okay, thank you. <laughs>